Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to find out how to calculate the total power of two loads connected to a three-phase system. Here we have load one, which draws 30 kilowatts with a power factor of 0.6, which is lagging. Here we have a second load, which draws 45 kVar, kilovar with a power factor of 0.8, which is lagging. So what does that mean and why do we have different units and what do we mean by lagging? Well, first of all, let's go to our triangle again. We have the triangle where we have on the hypotenuse the complex or apparent power. On the vertical axis here, we have the reactive or the reactive power. And on the horizontal axis, we have the real power. This is the real axis. This is the imaginary axis, which represents the reactive power. Now, the units we use for them is for the real power, we do indeed use watts. A watt is a joule per second. That's the real power consumed by the load. On the vertical axis, we have the reactive power, which has units of VAR. What does VAR mean? Well, VA is the units that we have for the complex or apparent power. VA stands for volt ampere. And basically, volt ampere is a watt, if you think about it. However, we use specifically volt ampere for the complex power because it's the apparent power, not the real power consumed. So that's why they give it a slightly different unit in order to indicate that's not the real power, that's just the apparent or the complex power. And then to indicate the units for reactive power, we add an R to it for reactive, volt ampere reactive, the units. Basically, they're kilowatts, if you think about it, but to differentiate between them, we use the three unit systems. So here, when they say that the load one has 30 kilowatts of power consumed, they mean the real power consumed. Over here, when they talk about KVAR, they talk about the reactive power. Not all of it is consumed. Part of it is consumed. Part of it is taken in and given back to the system. When they say that the power factor is lagging, what does that mean? What's lagging? Is it the current that's lagging or is it the voltage that's lagging? Again, they don't really tell you. They just presumed you know. But here's the key. Lagging means that the current lags the voltage. Now, if we have a reactive system which is inductive instead of capacitive in nature, if it's inductive in nature, then the current will indeed lag the voltage. Because in an inductor, current always lags the voltage. So when we talk about a lagging power factor, we indicate that the current lags the voltage. Therefore, it's an inductive load. Here again, a lagging power factor indicates that it's an inductive load, that the current is lagging the voltage. It's always good to know what these things mean. And finally, some relationships. The real power is equal to the complex power times the power factor. So we can actually write it as this is S multiplied times the power factor. PF is the power factor. Let's write that down, like so. Then Q equals the, the complex power times the sine of, of the phase angle. And finally, the complex power can be uh, calculated by taking the square root of the 3 times the line voltage times the line current. So now we're going to try to calculate the, the total power of the two loads. Hmm. How do we do that? Well, first, let's calculate the power of the first load. Basically, what we want is S total is going to be equal to S1 plus S2. So we need to find the apparent power of each of the loads separately. S1 is going to be defined as P1 plus JQ1. So what that entails is we need to find both the real and the reactive power of our first load. Now we're given the real power. The real power is defined as 30 kilowatts because they give it to us in terms of watts and that is the units of real power. So in this case, we know that P1 is 30 kilowatts. So S1 is equal to 30 kilowatts plus JQ1. So all we have left to do here is to find Q1 and Q1 can be found by using this relationship. Or, hmm, maybe let's see here, um, yes. What we need to do is find Q1 in terms of S. So first we're going to find S because we know P. Once we know S, we can find Q. So that's the way we're going to attack it. So S1, the magnitude of S1, the magnitude of S1 is equal to 
that would be here, S1 would be P divided by the power factor. So that would be equal to P, the magnitude of P divided by the power factor. So in this case, P is 30 kilowatts and the power factor is 0 0.6. And so that means that S1 is equal to 50 kilo, and of course that would be VA. We could write watts, but technically speaking, we should write it as VA. All right, so now we can find Q, because Q is the opposite side. So now we can say, take the sine of phi. So first of all, if the cosine of phi, cosine of phi is equal to 0 0.6, then the sine of phi is equal to, well, the way to do that is to take 0 0.6, take the inverse cosine of that, which is 53.13 degrees, and then we take the sine of that, and we get 0 0.8. So that would be 0 0.8. And so finally, we now can go over here, and Q is equal to S times the sine of phi. So Q1 is equal to S1 times the sine of phi, which is equal to 50K, and VA times the sine of phi, which is 0 0.8, which is equal to 40 kvar to be technical with two units and so finally we can say that s1 is equal to 30 kilowatts plus j of 40 kvar or better yet s1 is equal to 30 plus j40 and the units for s1 which is the units for the complex or parent power would be kilo va all right, so there's S1. Now we need to do the same for S2. Now notice here we're given the reactive power. We're given a power factor of 0 0.8. And so if the power factor is 0 0.8, that means if the power factor, which is the cosine of phi is equal to 0 0.8, that means that the the sine of phi, the sine of phi is therefore 0 0.6. So it's kind of the reverse of what we did over there. So we know that S2 is equal to P2 plus JQ2, and JQ2 is already known. So we have S2, which is equal to P2 plus J times 45K. We'll just leave the units off until the end. What about P2? Well, P2 can be found by taking S times the cosine of phi, but we don't know S yet. We have to find S2 first. The magnitude of S2 is equal to Q divided by the sine of phi. Q divided by the sine of phi. Q is 45K, and the sine of phi is equal to 0 0.6. All right. So 45 divided by 0.6 gives us 75. So that's equal to 75K. So now that we know S, we can find P2. P2 is equal to S times the cosine of phi. S times the cosine of phi, the power factor, so that's 75K. Multiply times the power factor of 0 0.8. So that would be 60K. And all right, now we're ready to find S2, which is equal to 60K plus J45K. All right, that's correct. So now we found S2. Now we're ready to add both of them together because we know that S total is the sum of the two. So this is equal to S1, which is 30 plus and I should put in the K, so 30K plus J40K, and we add that to S2, which is 60K plus 45K, which is 60K plus J45K. So together, when we add them up, that would be equal to 90K plus J85K, or in proper units, S total is equal to 90 plus J85, and the units would be KVA, volt ampere. So that's S total. Now, 
We want to convert that to magnitude and phase angle format. So this can also be written as S total is equal to 90 squared plus 85 squared. Take the square root. It gives us 123.8. 123.8 with a phase angle of, that would be 85 divided by 90. Take the inverse tangent of that, which is 43.36, 43.36 degrees, or with the units, S total is equal to 123.8, with a phase angle of 43.36 degrees, and with the units of KVA, volt ampere, for the total what we call complex or parent power of the two loads together. Notice that we do have to find everything in terms of the real imaginary part, the real power and the reactive power. We add the real power together, we add the reactive power together, and now we convert it to magnitude and phase angle. Notice that the phase angle is the combination of the two. That's how we find the total complex or parent power of two loads connected to a three-phase system. And that is how it's done.